Guys, I'm not convinced that Dragon Age Veilguard is the game that Bioware needs it to be in order for them to survive. I know, I know. Just let, let me cook. So Bioware used to be a company whose games I used to purchase sight unseen, do whatever I needed to do to get that game day one. I couldn't care less what they were working on. I knew that the game was going to be a home run. But after the middling success of Mass Effect Andromeda and the absolute failure that was Anthem, Bioware is no longer on that list. Consider that Bioware used to be the best in class without equal. 1998, Baldur's Gate. Dude, not only a great game, but a game that all CRPGs have kind of been measured against for the last 25 years. The year 2000, Baldur's Gate 2. Probably a game that's on every gamer's top 10 games of all time list. 2002, Neverwinter Nights. Still to this day, with the inclusion of Shadows of the Undertide and Hordes of the Underdark, there's no other Forgotten Realms campaign in existence that allows you to take a character from level 1 all the way through to level 40. Basically godlike status in 3rd edition D&D. 2003, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Some would argue that this is the best Star Wars game ever made. 2007, Mass Effect, the beginnings of what is potentially the greatest sci-fi RPG series of all time. 2009, Dragon Age Origins, the beginnings of possibly the greatest fantasy RPG series of all time. So reflecting on that time from about 1998 right through to about 2010, Bioware dispatched every challenge out of the stadium. Home run, home run, home run. Then in 2007, Bioware got purchased by Electronic Arts. And it's really difficult to believe that this isn't one of the core reasons why everything started to change. And don't forget, we wouldn't start feeling those changes until the next game came out. It was almost like some kind of transition period where they had to go through this thing Things were merging with EA and things started to creep into the games and make them feel just a little bit different. Not quite Bioware anymore. But to me, this is indicative of what EA is very good at. They are extremely good at making content for everyone. Making content for the masses. It's great for business, but Bioware's pedigree has always been ultra nerdy and niche. The kinds of games that Bioware's been hitting out of the ballpark have all been filled with stats and nerdy math, allowing players to really dig into the nuts and bolts of what makes your character effective or characters effective in this adventure that you're going on. Mass Effect 2 came out and I think that that's pretty much the tail end of Bioware's grip on what they were and where they came from. And it's the highest rated of the entire series. Dragon Age 2 came out and despite it being a financial success, the common thread of critique from longtime fans of the series said that it's just so different from Origins. Consider that the user score on Metacritic for Dragon Age Origins is well above 8, 8.5 across all platforms, and that for Dragon Age 2, it's down around 4. Now, Star Wars The Old Republic came out around the same time. It's an MMO. Once again, the user score for this game is currently sitting at around 6 on Metacritic, despite again being a financial success. Compare that with the high 8s of Knights of the Old Republic. Then we've got Mass Effect 3. Huge financial success. The highest rated game of the entire series, but only by critics. The user score is around 6. And the common thread of critique is once again around the character's development, the narrative and storyline. I know that the ending was a big audience divider and that counts too. And what a lot of people don't know is, is that the next two games that were supposed to be released by Bioware were actually cancelled. They were Warhammer Online Wrath of Heroes, which was a free to play multiplayer online battle arena game and Command and Conquer Generals 2 which was supposed to be an RTS, but got switched into a free-to-play, multiplayer-focused RTS. The very next game that we get out of Bioware is actually Dragon Age Inquisition. Again, massively financially successful. But the user score is once again sitting around a 6, and the critiques are the game is veered too far from its roots. And this is quite odd for me because I actually do like Dragon Age Inquisition. Now the next game scheduled to release from Bioware was called Shadow Realms. It was cancelled. Are you guys seeing a theme here? 
when you start laying it all out like this, it becomes kind of hard to ignore. There is a pattern. Things basically started turning to shit once EA took over. That's it. That, that's the whole thing. There was never a problem with user scores prior to that. Never. Not once. Not in any of their games. All the user scores, all the critic scores were kind of evenly matched. Now I hear what you're saying. Ah, oh, you can't just use Metacritic scores, etc, etc. Because of the whole toxic gamer mentality and all that kind of stuff. But I genuinely think there's more to it than that. Even when you cut out all of the ratings of zeros and ones, which is just rubbish, right? When you start to look at the remainder, what's left, you'll see the common threads of critique. I think this is generally because it's actually palpable. You can feel and see the differences in Bioware's games. They just aren't the same anymore. Now, Ray Mazika and Greg Zichuk, the co-founders of Bioware, both left in 2012. The founders of the studio, gone. James Olin, who was the senior creative director of Bioware for 22 years, left in 2017. Now, Drew Carpetian, the lead writer for most Bioware games, including Mass Effect 1 and 2, left after the end of The Old Republic. Mike Laidlaw, the creative director for Dragon Age, gone. A few months after Inquisition released, Aaron Flynn, the general manager, left after Andromeda. Chris Wynn, Chris Schlurf, both left in 2015 and 2016 prior to Andromeda's release. These are all pretty important people, I would say. And in my 18 years of experience as a game developer, really important people, generally high up on the ladder, don't just leave companies for tiny reasons, for inconsequential reasons. Ah, I wanted a different job. Ah, I wanted to do something new including the founders of that company. There's a lot more to that. And I would be willing to bet cash money that it's got a lot to do with creative freedom, differences of opinion, things that really divide the audience, that create a real kind of T-junction. We either go in this way or we're going that way. And those top dogs, they might say, okay, we'll go that way. We'll go your way. We'll try it out, see how it goes. And when they see that inevitable train wreck, they just go, nah, I don't want to be part of this. And no doubt, I've seen it time and time again. Consider this position yourself. You've just hit home run after home run after home run. You've built a legacy of solid 10 out of 10 games for the longest time. And now you're in a position where you're kind of being shoehorned into making games a little differently, doing things not the way that you've done them. And the reception isn't as good as what you're used to. The fan base that you've spent so long building up is crying out for you to do what you've always done. But you've been asked to do things like that. And your fans are saying, what are you doing? Now in that context, do you really want your name on that? Just food for thought. Just going back to this whole kind of like transitional period that Bioware was going through at that time, I think for me as a late adapter to the Dragon Age and Mass Effect series in particular, the changes were very, very clear because I didn't have to wait years and years in between games. I pretty much played all three of them back to back to back. And the biggest changes outside of the actual gameplay changes comes from the personal relationships that you develop with the cast and characters in the stories and how those were written. I found that those interpersonal relationships in the early Bioware games came around the building of bonds through the struggle relating to the main story and your cast and characters moving through that main story. And as time went on and we get into the, the later episodes of Dragon Age and the later episodes of Mass Effect, the characters already came preloaded with their own personal stuff that they're bringing to you into this journey. And I feel as writers, you have to be really, really careful with that. Now I can give you guys some examples. I'm dead set positive that I'm going to cause some veins to burst in heads out there. Pan Am, Cyberpunk 2077. I would not even remotely entertain any conversations with her two minutes after she was introduced in the game. I want nothing to do with her. Baldur's Gate 3, Lazel giving me attitude from the moment that we meet her out of the team. If you're going to be cocky, have an attitude, expect me, who's like the main character of this game, to just drop all my shit and all of a sudden do something for you, get wrecked, you're off the team. I want to surround myself with nice people, people who are chill, we vibe and as we like headed through this adventure, no back chatting, right? No attitudes, right? We're, we're a team, but we do it my way. This is, this is a democracy but I get to pick. 
Now, these kind of characters all fall under the umbrella of what I like to call Timmies. They are less like heroes and more like regular average people that you and me know in our everyday life. I don't want that in a video game that's about dragons and fighting undead and swords and magic. I don't want regular people whining in my ear about what's going on in their day. I don't want that in my game. And so what does this actually translate to? What am I really getting at here? It's that those stereotypical, archetypal, tropey characters are actually good. And I'm not afraid to admit that, man. At all. And the more that we push away from characters that are really black and white in terms of their personalities, the more gray that they become, the more wishy-washy, you know, all the relationships become, the more boring it is for me, the more mind-numbing it is for me. Because it feels so shallow. Let me tell you guys a good example. Warhammer Space Marines 2 just came out. I played through the campaign. I haven't played a game like that in years. That game knows exactly what it is. The cast and characters in that game throughout that main campaign, they know exactly who they are, what they are there for, and they get the job done. It's perfect. It's straight up fun. So, so good. Executed to perfection. Chef's kiss. I didn't feel for even one second of dialogue between that main cast of characters that there was any real world politics, any interpersonal like bullshit that was outside of the main story that had nothing to do with it. Like they were trying to sell me something, trying to teach me something about humanity or about relationships or about people. None of that. None of that at all. And it felt so good. It felt so clear, so refreshing, different. Now, in saying all of that, getting really personal with a character's story is not a bad thing. It can actually be awesome. It's all about the execution. Have you established this character in your story as a likable character? Is this a slow, gradual thing, or are you just slapping them across the face? Are you slapping your players across the face with all of these details immediately? A perfect example of this is Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't like cowboys. I've never liked cowboy films. I just don't like the cockiness, the attitude, the like, I'm the big man, you guys all listen to me kind of thing. Rubbish. Right? I I'm not into that kind of thing. Arthur Morgan changed my mind. That character is brilliant. Brilliant. It's, it's a masterpiece. Anyway, let's, let's bring it all back in and, and wrap this kind of up because ultimately what I'm trying to get at is during this transition period, it's really clear that Bioware was shaken up with new blood, new ideas, new directions, and that all led us to Mass Effect Andromeda and ultimately Anthem. And as I mentioned earlier, throughout that period of time, a lot of core and influential people left and when i first tried andromeda i was actually blown away graphically the game looks pretty good except for the characters you could literally stand at a walmart entrance for a couple of hours and you could see all the potential characters you could create in this game they're just a bunch of timmies you can't create any cool looking people this is something i just strongly disagree with and anthem well, that was a game that I was actually really pumped to play. But holy shit, that game did not know what it was supposed to be. I feel like the gunplay and the gameplay was actually really good, but it almost felt like a tech demo. That's it. It felt like that's the game that was salvaged out of a wreckage. And that's what we got. We got just like a little piece of what that game was supposed to be. Now we fast forward to just a few months ago in 2024. We were treated to a piece of marketing material for Dragon Age Veilguard, the first time we were actually seeing anything about the game. And holy shit, it was bad. It felt like this really cheap piece of marketing material that would be used to bring in like the free to play multiplayer arena shooter crowd. Absolutely nothing to do with the single player RPG crowd. But remember, this is what EA does. And it felt so forced. Characters sliding into the screen, like 
some kind of weird, like, Guardians of the Galaxy intro style thing. Absolute trash. And right there, I nearly noped out of ever wanting to see another thing about Dragon Age. And I thought right then and there, Dragon Age is dead and Bioware is done. And all I could think of was, who is making these decisions? Why can't they see that this is going to fail? Thankfully, since that time, we've had a lot more gameplay and a lot more kind of inside looks as to how the game is going to play. And I'm still not 100% convinced it's going to deliver on all the things that we expect from a Dragon Age. Remember, given everything that we've talked about in this video so far, all the successes and then the slow, gradual demise, the fall off after EA took over, what Bioware needs desperately isn't a financial win. It's a home run for the fans. Gamers these days are a lot more switched on. We're living in the time where there's a lot more information out there. There's a lot more people who know people and that information can spread around the internet at light speed. Marketing departments can no longer pull the wool over our eyes with smoke and mirrors. It just doesn't work anymore. People will call out bullshit immediately and no one is going to hand over their cash based on legacy anymore. And I think a lot of game devs realize that, but the people at the top, the people who are paying the cash money, the investors who are running the studios, I think that those guys are the ones that are stuck in the past. That's why games like Concord, for example, fail. Everybody already played Concord before Concord even released. I feel like I'm in that place where I am willing to eat all of my words if Dragon Age Veilguard really delivers and it is the home run. I, I will be more than happy for Bioware. I will be more than happy to reinstate them on that position and just be like, holy shit, I was wrong. You guys absolutely nailed it. But I am firmly sitting on the fence and just waiting to see. I My hype level is zero. And I, I know that I'll be playing Dragon Age Dreadwolf, but I am going into it thinking that the game is going to be a 5 out of 10 max. And if it's better than that, great. If it's worse than that, I'm just going to feel like, well, that's kind of what I thought. So here's my list of things that I'm keeping my eye on. If all I can make in Dragon Age Veilguard vale is a Timmy looking character, that's going to be the first sign to me that the game is going to be crap. The second thing is if all the main characters or supporting cast, if they're all just thirsty, that's going to be the second thing that tells me that this game is going to be crap. The third thing is if all the RPG elements, the real nuts and bolts stuff, the statistics, all the, you know, all the behind the scenes, super nerdy stuff that allow you to really dig into the character's functionality, the way that it behaves, if all that is dumbed down, it's just a further opening it all up to the masses. I don't think that's the right thing to do. And that will, again, make the game worse for me. What do you guys think about all this? Am I, I, I may be the only one who's thinking this. I might not be. Maybe all of you guys are secretly thinking this, but you don't want to say anything. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about what you've seen of Dragon Age Veilguard vale so far. If you're a longtime fan, how does the new one look to you so far? Are you hopeful? Are you not hopeful? Are you on the fence like I am? Let me know in the comments down below. Once again, thank you very much to all of my YouTube members, my Patreons, and all of the people who subscribe to me on Twitch. Links for all that stuff down below. I really enjoy making this kind of content for you guys. See you guys in the next one.